everyone that is here today. I want to welcome everyone to our very first podcast live on Facebook. Of course, we're going to do the replay later on, but we have such a wonderful start with the presence of Dr. Tamarin Bedford, MD. Let me tell you a little bit about her. She's the self-care coach with an infectious smile. <laughs> emergency room doctor who also helps busy professional women put self-care and wellness first. She's also the host of Docs Who Care podcast, and she has a YouTube channel. She's the founder of Your Caring Docs and also Your Caring Society, a membership-based community designed to educate, inspire, and support busy women professionals in coaching optimal or reaching optimal health and wellness. She's providing that health and wellness with a twist. Mm -hmm. she, she, now listen to this, she's an ER, emergency room physician. She's a wife, a mother, and yet she's on a mission to help busy professional women put their health and wellness first. And she understands that women not always have the time to care for themselves. So she's gonna show them how. She's designed to have tools and information to give to individuals so they can take care of themselves in the best way possible. Dr. Tamara Belka Beckford, welcome to Thank Crush you. Your Mountain Live podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Such a wonderful introduction. I can't believe it's all about me. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you something. There's so much to you. You're an amazing human. <laughs> you, 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 you're so multifaceted, as I mentioned before. <laughs> so it's a thrilling opportunity to just to sort of get to know you a little bit more. So, you know, and, and we kind of connected a, a while back mm -hmm. and you have a tremendous presence online, mm -hmm. but your practice is amazing as well. You know, so just out of curiosity, what, what you know, we, we talked a little bit about self-care. So what are some ways that you can um, change and transform yourself in terms of self-caring. Yeah, that's a busy thing with everything that you do. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to use you as the example. And I have a lot of professional women mm -hmm. um, that, 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 that I'm connected to through my, through my uh, day job and everything else. Mm -hmm. And they're here and they got to figure this out. So I'm <laughs> going to talk to them. Figure out how do we take care of ourselves. So this is such an important aspect of our lives, right? So we only get one. Like we said, that this is not the practice run. <laughs> this is it. So we only get one life. So um, the self-care motto that I go by, I really think there are three pillars to it, right? So you have the alignment of the mind, the body, and the spirit, or you can say the alignment of the soul as the third one, but it's still really the mind, body, and the spirit. Now, how you align those three aspects of your life together is really an easy and useful way for you to really think about self-care and to be able to incorporate it. So you have your mind, like what are you inputting into your mind? especially on a daily basis? Are you inputting positive or negative information? Now, for me, you ask, like, you know, what is something that I do in order to incorporate positive things or to do my self-care routine? Because notice it's called self-care. It's not called everybody care. So my routine is unique to me. You might incorporate some of it for yourself, but you're gonna make your self-care unique to you. So for my mindfulness portion of my self-care routine, I start that off with my wake-up routine. Now, I intentionally do, do not call this the morning routine. I call it a wake-up routine because I work nights. So for all of those who are some of your um, health professional um, women or even some of the males who are listening, who are the graveyard shift, I think that's what they call us, like we're the graveyard shift, so we're the overnight shift. So my wake up time is not going to be 7 a.m. because at that point I'm on my way home or finishing up at that time, finishing up my job. So my wake up time is four in the afternoon, right? So when I wake up, the first thing that I do is that I incorporate positive information in. And for me, it's mindfulness and really making myself 
intentional about what I'm bringing in so that I can approach my day with the response that I need and not with the reaction to what is going on. So my personal thing, first thing in the morning for me, or first thing on my wake up routine is to read and devotion. So for me, it's part of my spirituality part, right? Mm -hmm. So it's devotion is the first thing. So I read my Bible and I read verses and I sit and I, and at that point meditate. So now if you're not a person who is um, into reading your Bible or so, you might be into um, another form of mindfulness, which is meditation. So for me, that's a form of meditating, right? How do I approach my day? What am I calm, calming myself down? Am I bringing in anxiety with me throughout the day? No. Am I going to bring in... Go ahead. No, no, no. That's that. But I have to stop you there because you're... Cause it's amazing how in sync we are. Number one, mm -hmm. um, see, I understand the idea of third shift, but third shift in the hospital, emergency room, mm -hmm. and how important it is that when you do wake up, you have mm -hmm. that. Because emergency room, God knows, you'll agree with me, especially on two occasions, okay, when you have a convergence. Convergence meaning when it's a full moon <laughs> on a Saturday night. Or even today. What is today? Oh, yes, the 13th. So um, and not only is it the 13th, what day of the week is it? It's a Friday. It's so Friday. Oh. So are there, are there superstitions in the emergency room? Absolutely. Yeah. And don't let it be a full moon today. I actually did not check to see if it will be a full moon. But no, but you can agree with me on this, or, or, or to correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Is it not true mm -hmm. that, we, that on a full moon in the emergency room at night, things are a little bit more hectic? It does appear to be a little bit more hectic. Now, yeah. I haven't done the direct studies or have not looked at the studies, but we do sit and ask that question when things are very hectic. Is, to, is it a full moon? I mean, there are things that happen with a full moon. Let's just be honest, right? The gravitational pull that occurs. So, or, you know, people are going into labor more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so maybe also other um, aspects of people's lives. Maybe they're out partying. You know, maybe mood changes, um, you know, occurs. Not really sure. I've not directly looked into that. But uh, the superstition that exists for us as emergency um, physicians, and actually not only the physicians, for all who work in the emergency department, if there's a full moon, we are heightened and we are sensitive to the changes that might occur in the human nature <laughs> who enters yes, the department. Yes. I'll tell you something. When I was in, I was working on the psych units at the time, and <laughs> I'll tell you something. Whenever we had a full moon, the emergency room was sending folks up, and they were different. And that was a time when you really had to take time, even for yourself, on your break. And then in the morning, you knew you were coming in that day. Afterwards, you had to do things a detox. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. From everything and all that energy that was going on there. Actually, so, yeah. So that, I got to ask you this. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that why you mentioned self care. Mm -hmm. So now, why is self care and wellness not selfish? Why is it not being selfish? Well, that's a great question. So it's not being selfish because for you to take care of others in your life, you act, you need to have something to give. Now, when you are performing self-care as an act, you are refilling your cup. You're refilling your body, refilling your mind, your body, and your soul. Therefore, you have energy to give to others. When you're taking care of someone, it's a one-way street. Let's think of a flow, mm. right? There's a flow, just like a water flows through a pipe. Things flow through a one-way valve. There is a receptacle at the beginning and also at the end. The receptacle at the beginning, that's our, even the container at the beginning and the receptacle at the end. The container at the beginning, that is where the energy is flowing from, that is not a, an infinite um, set of um, that container. 
there is, it has a finite amount. So once energy continues to flow and it goes into the receptacle, so this is the caregiver and this is the person being cared for, once this empties, who's going to take care of this person? Right. I'll tell you right? something. I, I, again, um, two things I got to tell you. I, mm -hmm. I love it and why I agree with it. Because number one, um, everything is energy, essentially. Absolutely. So Absolutely. we have to be able to have a, a, a continuum. Mm -hmm. of it. it can't be just one way. Okay. Number two, when I work with my people, when I work with my clients, that's mm -hmm. one of the things I do is take them and teach them ways of refilling that cup. It's a recharge. Uh, that said, I know personally when my family got sick, mm -hmm. I got to a place where I was just giving, 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 giving. Mm -hmm. And there was a point where I said, I have to go. So oh, guess why you had to go because you're. Yeah, it was empty. Guess where I went? To recharge back to the islands. You went to Jamaica? I certainly <laughs> did. There we go. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. So, you know, but I I took that time. I didn't do a whole lot, but mm -hmm. I took that time, you know, to sit, to read, to pray. Mm -hmm. And that was a powerful, powerful thing. Mm -hmm. So it's so important that um that, that we do that. I love hearing the things that I do and work with my clients on. Mm -hmm. Just echoed from you, you know. You Absolutely. So, it's uh, actually interesting uh, hearing that you said that when you went back, you said you read you prayed and what you did was refill one third of that aspects of when I talk about the self-care, which is the mind, right? Mm -hmm. So you went back and you got your mind back in control. Mm -hmm. So you refilled all that you needed within your mind so that now you can give. We said that, you know, I was talking to one of our, uh, my colleagues earlier today from mm -hmm. England and, you know, she's, um, she calls herself the glitter practitioner. I saw that. <laughs> Yes. And one of the things that she says, like, you know, she says that you can give once your cup is running over, that's what you give. If your cup is empty or half empty, then you're not able to give at that point. So what you did was refill mm -hmm. and then you had the spillover. The spillover is what you have to give to others. Indeed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. now, I want to share this interesting point with you. I saw this. This is, um, this is a, uh, a, a just a, a quote from the um, a British Medical Journal. It mm -hmm. says here, in terms of results, it's increased stress, weight, and, and um, less exercise in relation to glycemic control. Mm -hmm. This is actually connected to the stress. So it says this. It says an increase in perceived stress and anxiety, weight gain, less exercise, but no deterioration of glycemic control occurs in both people with relatively well-controlled type 1 and type 2 diabetes, but says as perceived stress showed to be associated with glycemic control, this provides opportunities for healthcare professionals like yourself to put more emphasis on psychological aspects during diabetes care consultations. Now, the reason why that's important to me is because I work with a lot of individuals who are diabetic and pre-diabetic. Mm -hmm. And I've seen where many of them who work at night, uh, who work uh, in the high stress situations, it is very difficult to get their glycemic index down, their glucose mm -hmm. down. So my question would be in this case, why is it vital for them to manage how they perceive and manage their stress? Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that, please? Absolutely. And, um, you know, one of the things that I'm glad that you highlighted in that article, I didn't read the article myself, but just by listening to the part that you have stated, it says the perceived stress. Yes. So it's important because, as you mentioned, that is a psychological aspect to the um, how someone is handling situation within their life. So it might not be directly stressful, but if to a third person. Mm -hmm. However, if those who are involved perceives it as stress, then they still deal with um, the issues that aligns it, the body with a stress reaction. So now the easiest way to answer that question is to understand what goes on within the body within a stress reaction, right? So within the stressful part of our response, we have two, we have the stress and then we have like the rest and recovery response. During the stressful part of our response, our body is going through a physiological change 
with a perception of danger involved, right? So that's our physiological change that has been within our body from the beginning of time. That's mm -hmm. an evolutionary process within ourselves. So why we have that? Because during times there were eminent danger that occurred and therefore we needed certain things. We needed more energy, we needed it quickly. We needed to energy in order to get away from the imminent danger, right? So at that point, our body is releasing adrenaline and it's also releasing additional hormones such as cortisol, which is one of our stress hormones, right? Releasing the stress, it increases the glucose. The glucose, we're using it for energy. That's what our body uses glucose for. Now, when we are in, the, and because that's a perceived stress that was not just perceived, it was real. When the tiger was going after you, it wasn't perceived back in the days, it was real. So you needed that response. Not about all, bears in my case though. Bears, wild boars, <laughs> anything yeah, that yeah. I can do it, but wild boars too. I was get terrified of those. Yes, so anything with a husk and, and sharp teeth. <laughs> and you, you needed to be able to run like Usain Bolt, right? Hey, <laughs> but needless to say, in this day and age, we're not all in that scenario. Right. However, our body does have, and that's where the perceived stress part comes in versus the imminent danger. So we have stress reaction to um, situations what's going on in our lives that does not necessarily cause any imminent danger but we're in that constant level of stress so a great um example of that is that what you mentioned those of us who work in the emergency or in any healthcare fields where you're you're in um environments where you need to get things done quickly lives mm -hmm. are at stake or even there are times that not everything has to be done quickly or remember it's the environment that you're in, right? So your body goes into its still response, its physiological state where, all righty, adrenaline, rushing, cortisol level. So now your cortisol level, instead of it being at the restorative state and um, level, it's now at the stress level. So it's constantly there, but your body does not need all of that, right? We're not running. So we have the excess glucose there, but are we using it to run away from things? And are we using it in short bursts? Because even if we think back to the evolutionary process, the high cortisol level was not there on a consistent basis. The tiger was just not there every single day for months and years and years. It was short bursts. But now you're having a consistent, consistent level of the, the um, cortisol. So your glucose level is consistently high. So now what are some of the things that you can do to try to bring that down? That's when you have to go in and use either some of the physiological or mental um, techniques in order to bring that down. Mm -hmm. Now, some technique that you can do is one that you have mentioned, which is a part of the mindfulness process of um, thing, which is meditative breathing. That is a quick and easy way to bring stress levels down. Even if you are not intentionally feeling it because the body perceives stress, you enter this environment that it's a high stress environment. Once you enter work, work is a high stress environment. Work is not usually a relaxing state. Because you know you come to do, you're especially, and I'm talking to most of the healthcare workers here, you're in an environment where you know that you are there to get certain things done. Lives are dependent on, on what you do. Everyone wants their report. Everyone wants to ensure that the other person did the right thing. There still will be an environment where you might have um, some form of a high level of um, response if a negative outcome occurs. So you have all of that in your mind. So you'll have to find ways in order to reduce that. So um, there are apps on the phone to remind you, deep breaths. They do five or six deep breaths and that's been shown and it's been proven and documented that breathing exercises help to reduce stress. Absolutely. Mindfulness. Now, if I can jump yeah. in for a second. Absolutely. That's brilliant, okay. Um, 
just to sort of thing, and you correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to trust mm-hmm. your, your your medical expertise on this, okay? Mm-hmm. But but we're talking about this the sympathetic and parasympathetic the sympathetic nervous system, okay. and you know commonly called the flight or fight response, mm-hmm. rest and digest response. Mm-hmm. So you know when if we see someone in a dark alley, friends, and we don't recognize the shape right away, we get the fight or flight, right? Mm-hmm. Now. If we happen to see that, see somebody, and we just recognize the shape, it's it's the beautiful and talented Dr. Tamara Beckford. We're going to be ready to rest and <laughs> digest, right? Which goes, absolutely. Oh, it comes right down, and mm-hmm. now we're ready to maybe maybe join her family and then have something to eat because we are in that state. So right. the idea again is to take time for yourself. I have another question for you, okay? In terms of dealing with mind prep, because mm-hmm. mind prep is part of self-care. You know you're going to go into a situation. You know there's going to be a problem, maybe something that maybe you're not sure you can handle. Are there techniques, and then I'll share with you one of my techniques that um, that we can use to sort of de-stress ourselves for the moment to handle the situation? Absolutely. So the first thing that one needs to think about is um, the pre-prep work. So are is the situation what you are making it to be or is it truly that way? Because our mind is, uh, it does a lot of things. It's very protective. That's one mm-hmm. of it. It's a, if you think of a mama bear type of mentality, that's our mind, very protective. We have almost like, 70,000 thoughts per day and a great portion, almost around 60 to 70% of it, it's negative. It's negative, why? Because it's trying to protect you just like this. I remember that tiger we just talked about? Well, you know, that tiger still exists, you know? So I don't want you to forget, I don't want you to forget. So your mind will constantly bring you to a state of negative. And that's why you have to now, when you're prepping yourself, Figure out, are the things I'm thinking true or is it thoughts that are in my head that I am perceiving to be true? Mm -hmm. Is that, are you having that conversation with that colleague that you perceive that they said something wrong to you the last time you interacted with them? Are you having this conversation that does not exist yet? You know, are you having that conversation about, well, if they say this to me, I'm going to retort that. And don't they ever say that to me because then I'm going to say this. And da, 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 da. are you having that? Because that's already bringing your stress level up and you haven't even gotten out of the shower. That's right. So, so, that, so that's part one. Now, so that is really understanding your thoughts and recognizing that not all thoughts are yours and to be believed. Number two, if you are in an environment that you are, it's an uncomfortable environment and you're unable to get out of that environment for whatever reason at that point in time, then some of what we talked about, meditating, mindfulness work, that's a great way to prepare yourself to get in. Because when you have centered yourself mindfully and like understanding where you are and understanding that number one like my thoughts are not my own all of that you know it's just emotions that are flooded um when you understand that um i am in control of how i respond to things i'm in control so someone can say something negatively to me right is that phrase a negative phrase or not it depends on if I allow myself to interpret it as a negative phrase. Because if I allow myself to interpret it as a negative phrase, then my mind is going to get flooded with negative emotions and then I'm going to start to feel negative. But if you have that phrase, that phrase is brought um, stated towards you, but you do not allow yourself, like you say, you don't allow yourself to absorb or to even look at it as a negative phrase and it's just a phrase from somebody who just happens to be standing in front of you and Mm -hmm. you can you know move on why you've still centered yourself you do not engage and you can respond and not react so emotionally you're still intact and your stress levels are still down so those are some ways that you can 
respond to that. What um, techniques would you take someone through uh, in order to achieve that? Say, case in point, okay, mm -hmm. I had a client um, at one point that had a fear of speaking and mm -hmm. they had something coming up. So mm -hmm. we went through a, a, um, basically a series of visualizations that mm -hmm. we anchored to him. And mm -hmm. then by anchoring these visualizations, okay, he said a keyword. So he would just sort of tap his arm like this and say a keyword that put him into state. Mm -hmm. And then he was able to go ahead because he was in his mind, he was a different person. He had created that. Now yourself, um, I got to ask you, what, to, what, what would you do in a, in a similar situation? Okay, going into the ER room, emergency surgery. I don't know. You tell me. So what would I do if I had how would you? Or how would you help? Yeah, how, what, how, what state would you or how, what technique could you use in a similar so, situation? So for, for example, so the, the, the person that you mentioned who had a fear of um for them it was a fear of public speaking so if you had someone who had a fear or they worked in the emergency department and then they had a fear of um handling certain situations in the emergency department so the technique that you mentioned is a great one visualization visualizing yourself positively um encountering are positively dealing with that situation um another one is really a pause Mm -hmm. because our mind goes a lot faster and it goes to the end of a situation. So pause and really dissect what truly is making you feel that emotion, mm -hmm. because what you are stating at times might not truly be what you're feeling on the inside. Right. So just like how you can, if you've had, I have a three-year-old, so if there's anything with three and two year olds, they often ask that question, why? Mm -hmm. But they don't ask it once. They don't ask it twice. They don't ask it three times either. They just keep going, going, going. So you have to use that same technique and get truly down to the root cause mm -hmm. of what truly is making you feel that way. And then once you have um, revealed what it is, then you can handle that particular thing. Now, if it's that your fear is because you're going to be ridiculed, why do you feel like you're going to be ridiculed? Because you don't understand either the situation or if, say, if it's a test of knowledge, is it that you don't understand the knowledge behind what um, to do if you're in the emergency situation? If you don't understand the knowledge behind it, then you realize, well, well, that's simple. I can just look that up. You know, so really getting to the root cause is one way. But the first thing to do is to really just pause. Yes. Pause. Man, that's absolutely beautiful. Now, you work with women uh, pretty much around the world and you help them to, to de-stress themselves. And so I got to say, Dr. Tamara, help a brother out, please. <laughs> I get that often, even from my own. Tips that you give men. To, ha to handle stress and, and lower their glucose. <laughs> For the male in handling the stress and lowering the glucose, I'd say that some some tips are universal for male and for female. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking and you're seeing some of these examples, it's not just relegated to the female population. Mm -hmm. So the, the same applies. So some of the tips to lower your glucose, number one is to really recognize and understand that carbs, you know, that's one of our things. Carbs yes. is one of those, um, I call it a little sneaky. It's very sneaky. Mm -hmm. And um, once it gets and I'm getting um, some of this info from my wonderful friend, Dr. Catherine um, Toomer, too. She's, you know, helps um, those who are dealing with and trying to lose weight by understanding how the body works. And part of it is also understanding diabetes within oneself. So carbs is a little tricky, tricky devil. Yes. So carbs likes to sneak in. And when it does, it wants more. So if you think of Gremlins, the show from what is like with the eighties, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So but you were too young to know that. Oh please, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I got the proof here. All right, 
I should know that. You should know who the gremlins. Yes. But if you do recall that show, as soon as water hits them, it just multiplies and they just want more and more. So that's carb. So if you have encountered and, um, you know, entered into a meal and the carb is the first thing that that is that goes into your mouth, then you know that you're almost down that slippery slope and it's mm -hmm. going to be a hard battle. That's just one of the many things. Hard battle to get beyond that slope because now the body's like, oh, thank you so much. And that's when the grumbling starts to multiply, right? So now it's like, I want more, I want more, I want more. And we definitely know that carb is one way for of increasing the blood glucose. The other thing that we talked about, and we talked about like even mindfulness and even using those three techniques of um, mind, body, and um, spirit. So the mind, we already talked about that, reducing the stress. What are some things that you can do to reduce your stress, therefore reduce your cortisol level, and therefore reducing the glucose? The body, the body is what you're putting in and also expenditure, right? So if you are able to do movement, and I call it movement versus exercise, and I, am, I intentionally use the word movement because not everyone can do the traditional exercise, but you might or might not be motivated to do traditional exercise. But movement is something that you might like, right? So if you like dancing and if there's a favorite song of yours that really just gets you pumping, then that you can do, right? So movement also in building muscle tone and muscle mass helps to reduce your glucose. Muscle mass, I've seen that um, happen. I've seen it in like my own lab work. I'm like, what? Oh, really? So mm -hmm. you've seen that muscle mass helps to do that. And then we're talking about now spiritual. So what are some spiritual things? Laughter, reducing stress through laughter, being around people who are doing things that you like and are positive um, and are similar to things that you would like, right? Being around others who are probably in doing similar things, such as we are all part of a, um, a group. We understand that we want to lower our blood glucose. And these are some of the positive ways that we're doing this. So you're not that you're not feeling isolated. Therefore, you're not being depressed. And therefore, you're now like, you know, you're feeling um with a socialization, you now have the ability to help to control this diabetes, the glucose, and so on with others who are also understand your struggle and understand when you have setbacks. So those are some quick tips. You know, I love what you're saying. You know, we're always in sync. You know, it, what, the, what came to mind Mm -hmm. was a Bible verse, and mm -hmm. it's found there in Proverbs 18.1. It tells us that the one isolating himself is seeking mm -hmm. their own selfish longing against all wisdom, they'll break forth. So even the Bible recognizes that. Mm -hmm. Another thing I got to tell you is this. When you talk about that group mm -hmm. that are there for a purpose, mm -hmm. you know, the, it is said that the body, the heart actually generates its own energy field, the electromagnetic field, so it extends about three feet out from the body. Mm -hmm. So when you're there with those individuals that you love and that mm -hmm. you that, that, that are important to you, the body actually syncs up. Women have that experience of syncing up in a very profound way related to life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but human beings as a whole actually generate that and they kind of pulse together after a while yeah and here that energy is building so when you have that positive energy it, it, it creates a loop within the system you know so that now we're kind of resting and digesting together so to speak yes okay. and, you're, and you're producing like you know we all talk about the different like hormones that are out there we've talked about cortisol as one of those stress hormones but when you're talking about like the extending and the force field that's around with bonding it is another wonderful hormone that's out there which is the oxytocin yes. i know a lot of people think about that as like you know it is a bonding hormone and it does occur with women a lot of times that, you, that allows you to bond with your baby but it's a it's a hormone that's there when you're around people and you want to be around them and then you're finding that i'm feeling comfort being around these people and you know that's the bond that occurs and that's the bond that occurs through socializing with others and not being so isolated as you mentioned yes absolutely Absolutely. So, you know, the important things when you deal with stuff like that, mm -hmm. okay, if we're going to lower our glycemic index, if we're going to do that, we have to make sure that 
or you, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that the right choice of association is also important. Mm -hmm. Because if we are saying, okay, I have to fix myself, and we associate with individuals who are not fixing themselves, mm -hmm. but doing the opposite, mm -hmm. we may enjoy the company, but now, what's it really doing to us? And then when the stressful time comes, we go right back to the, 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 the problems. We, we immediately go back to the carbs. We immediately go back to the things that are not good for us mm -hmm. see, because we're already in that state of mind by reason of association, you know? Absolutely. But, you know, all right. so, so I've got two last questions for you. Mm -hmm. Question number one, okay? Question number one. Very important question. Ackies and saltfish or fried dumplings? Oh, <laughs> both. <laughs> 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 so it's really, really good. So the ackee and saltfish is really such a, a great meal. And now, we're in the South here. We got to tell them what we're talking about. We're in the South. Right. So, <laughs> so I am from Jamaica, and yes. the ackee and saltfish is our national dish. Mm -hmm. So ackee and saltfish, ackee is a fruit, and um, it uh, really has a very unique taste. And we usually mm -hmm. pair it with saltfish, which is codfish. So an ackee and saltfish meal, it's very high in protein. Ackee itself, I think it's probably like nine grams of protein in ackee. Mm -hmm. And then when you add the codfish, codfish can be, I think, I can't even recall how many grams, but codfish is a very high protein meal. So the ackee plus the codfish is a very high protein and it's a well-balanced meal. So ackee is very high in, um, in fat but the good fat mm -hmm. so it's a so it's and it's a fruit and it's very low 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 nut like you said the glycemic index right. so it's like a really really great um pairing to have now the carbs is obviously the dumpling the fried dumpling but if you can lower the amount of carbs and your protein is way higher than the carbs which is the ackee and the sawfish then you can enjoy a very nutritious and absolute best meal ever <laughs> Listen, especially that was on my independence treat. day <laughs> that, was, that was my treat that was my that was my treat Friday, saturday morning i got off they got get off the train up in long island i come down mm -hmm. and um i stop and get that nice big plate you know yes Listen, absolutely. you see what i'm saying now my <laughs> family my family is from the st kitts nevis Mm -hmm. you know, but you know, you get you have that cross cultural influence. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely, so, absolutely. So, that I, West so, Indian influence. <laughs> yes, darling. Yes, 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 yes. See, mm -hmm. you guys have you guys had your had your had, had your Bob Molly. We had Mighty Sparrow. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing. Last question. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, I ask this question to all my guests, yes. and so I'll ask you, Tamara Beckford. With everything that you do, mm -hmm. what does it mean to you to crush your mountain? To crush my mountain. So crushing my mountain really means first by putting the goal out there and then ensuring that it aligns with everything within my being. So crushing my mountain means that I'm achieving my goals while still being able to be there for my family and also being able to provide a uh, pathway for those who are coming behind me so that's crushing it's powerful and and and, and very concise like 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 it's like like a, like, a, like a medical professional <laughs> it has really been a pleasure to have you and thank you i think we did it we, we we started off this weekly podcast with a bang uh by the way folks um this is friday and we did it today friday the 13th because of her schedule, because I was once I met her, I said, "Gotta have her." Oh, so thank you. <laughs> we did it that. But but every Tuesday going forward, you'll find us here at five o'clock at Crush Your Mountain Live. See, okay, and on Facebook, you'll catch the replay on YouTube. So make sure when you go to YouTube, you like and subscribe and hit the notification bell, etc., etc., etc. For that too, because we'd love to have you. But like I said, most importantly, friends. Don't just climb your mountain, crush through it. Because all of us have to take charge of our health, de-stress from 
all the situations that happen. So we look forward to seeing you next time. Dr. Tamara, thank you so very much. And we will see you guys next time. Thank you for having me.